Good afternoon. Today is Thursday. I almost said Tuesday. Thursday, October 22nd. And we started off with, of course, our attendance. And then we moved on to grading our homework from last night because I knew it was a little challenging because there was about four or five skills within this one homework. So that is found in weeks 10 and 11, third grade math. Yesterday, we did the first three. And then homework, if you want to just go over and pause. Students, help me complete the first question from homework last night. Can you flip it over? They helped me finish the second question. I'm going to pause. The third question. And then the last question in the homework last night, they had to create their own. So I had a student tell me what array that he created. And so he did four rows and five columns. And then from there, I asked students and they helped me complete the problem. So you will have a different answer than, than this one because we were supposed to create, you're supposed to create your own array. All right, then we moved in today's, to today's actual math. In our math book, so get out chapter, chapter three math. And I skipped around to try to make it, I, I didn't like the order of some of these lessons. And I'm say, I saved the word problems for last. So the word problems in the book, how they explain it, to me is confusing and I didn't want to try to explain it because with our word problems we're talking about cubes so I didn't want to move away from cubes so we worked on the homework together so I'll explain some of the homework questions that we did based on word problems it is page 118a is where we started and it is lesson 3.4 all right I still use cubes. I want them to also still use cubes. But now with evaluate, what we're adding is a picture. When you evaluate, you're, just, you're thinking, okay, how do I solve this problem? I know what it's asking me. I know the numbers I need to use. And I know the um, whether I'm doing multiplication, addition, subtraction. So the evaluate is putting it all together and figuring out what do I need to do to solve. With evaluate, I want you to add a picture. So that's the only difference from the cubes in the past. So number one, Robert put some toy blocks in into three rows. There are five blocks in each row. How many blocks are there? So we have our cubes. So we I'll always skip to you, underline the question. How many blocks are there? All right, we're looking for blocks. So we need to circle our key numbers. Well, we know we're having three rows of blocks. So three is a key number. Oh, there's blocks right here. So five must be another key number. When a box the math verb. Rows, ooh, remember when we see rows, that means we need to create an array. We need to draw an array. Guess what, array means multiplication. But I want you to draw a picture. So now we're gonna evaluate, we're gonna look at it. All right, so we need how many total blocks? We know there are three rows. Right there, I'm gonna stop. I know I have three rows, so I'm gonna draw one, two, three, three rows. I know there are five blocks in each row, so I'm just gonna start with the first one. I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna number the top. All right, so each row, I'm just gonna fill it in. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. If I count up all these blocks, I get 15 blocks. If I, I just want you to recognize that this is multiplication. So remember, our rows are the first number, three, times five, our columns, equals 15. Number two. And I gave them time to do number two, and then we went over it. That's why it's circled. Mr. Fernandez is putting tiles on his kitchen floor. There are two rows with nine tiles in each row. How many tiles are there? Cubes, underline the question. How many tiles are there? I kind of do a half box because I don't want to confuse it with the math verb, but we're looking for tiles. 
Key numbers. Oh, there's tiles, so nine's important. Rows, we know, is an array. So I'm thinking that in my head. And two, so we're still talking about tiles. So two rows with nine tiles. And then box or math verb are rows. Each is actually a math verb for multiplication, um, but I just want to focus on rows right now because I want you to draw an array. Now we're going to evaluate. All right. I know we have two rows, so I'm going to stop right there and draw my one, two rows with nine tiles in each. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. My first row, I'm going to draw my second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then I'm going to label the top just so I know I didn't make any beautiful oops. Just want to make sure I didn't accidentally draw eight boxes or tiles. I drew nine. Now we fill, um, oh, I'm sorry, now we just count. Let's solve it. We count all our boxes and we get 18 tiles. Again, our multiplication sentence is two rows, the two, our nine columns equals 18. Number three. In Jillian's garden, there are three rows of carrots, two rows of string beans, and one row of peas. There are eight plants in each row. How many plants are there in the garden? Our cubes underline the question. How many plants are there in the garden? We're looking for plants. Circle our key numbers. All right, carrots, hey, they come from the ground. That's a plant. So we're in a circle three. String beans come from the ground. That's a plant. So we circle two. Peas come from the ground. Circle one. And then it says plants right here, so we know that's a key number. So we have a lot of key numbers. Now we're in a box or math verb. Oh my gosh, we have row, row, row. We're going to make an array. Now we have to figure out how to make an array. There's a lot of numbers. It's very confusing to me. Hmm. Well, I know I'm first going to draw three rows. So that's what I'm going to do. One, two, three. That's why I put you do not need to write carrots, but I did that so I knew. Okay, these three rows are carrots. So I'm done with three. I don't need to do three anymore. Two rows of string beans. So then I added two. So three, four, five. I put these two. Those are my string beans. Okay. I'm done with two. Don't need to use it anymore. One row of peas. So I added one more row, and that's why I wrote peas. All right. I'm done with one. Done with that key number. Then it says there are eight plants in each row. Oh, so guess what? I'm just going to fill it in. So I counted. I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I added my numbers on top so I know I didn't miss any. And then I filled it in. Make sure each row you add because sometimes it gets small and it gets um, a little difficult. But here's my one row, two, three. It's getting a little lower. Four, five, and then six. And then when you count up all the X's, you get 48. So my answer is 48 plants. But again, I want to practice multiplication or multiplication sentence. So six is rows. The first number is rows. So we have six rows and eight columns. That's where you get eight. So six times eight, eight equals 48 plants. Your homework are the remaining three on the front page and the entire back. Remember, this is review. We need to estimate. Don't just add it. Round it first. Sum means to add. So you're just going to line these two up and add. Then we went and read Mary, well, pause, break. Then we, I showed a video on cause and effect. We worked on it, walk to learn. They're working in it and walk to learn as well. But we're also doing more of the third grade standards. So it's a little more challenging during our normal class time. I showed a video, so I will put that link in the comments below. And then from there, we pulled out our Wonders textbook, page 70. We're still working on Mary Anderson's Great Invention. And then our weeks eight or 10 and 11, Language arts, and we're going to turn that to page. Well, I forgot page numbers, but it's the Mary Anderson's Great Invention Cause and Effect. All right. Um, we talked about the video and what cause and effect means. 
So cause is the why, effect is the, well, what happened? What was the end result? And so when I say, I am hungry because I forgot to eat, all right? So the why is I forgot to eat. But what happened is I'm hungry. So we talk about cause and effect every time we say because. So as a result, but it's flipped. And that's what's confusing to me. So I know it can be challenging for you. So on this worksheet, don't worry what I did up there. So we're not to fill in the blanks. I did the first one for you. Okay. Mary rode a streetcar. Why did she wear, why did she ride a streetcar? That is what happens. She rode a streetcar. Why? Because Mary was cold and wet and wanted to warm up. So that's why it's flip-flop. When we talk, we would say Mary rode a streetcar because Mary was cold and wet and wanted to warm up. But for some reason, cause always comes first in school. They always want to see the cause first, the why first. But when we talk, we always say the effect first, all right? So we're going to read, I'm only going to read a few pages based on um, where the rest of our cause and effects are. So I'm going to skip page 71 and I'm going to go to page 72. Of course, we did this together. So this is an overview. I'm going to go a lot quicker through it. All right, so our next one we were looking for, we have the cause. Snow and ice built up on the streetcar's windshield. We need to figure out, well, what happens? Mary Anderson grew up in Alabama in the winter of 1902. She went to New York City. It was cold and windy day. The sky was a gray curtain. Snow was a white blanket on the ground. Mary was cold and wet because she wanted to warm up and get dry, she rode a streetcar. So that's how I found the first, our first cause and effect on the worksheet. Let me keep reading, because we haven't figured out what happens, the cause of snow and ice building up on a streetcar's windshield. Back then, some streetcar windshields had two parts. They opened with a push from her, from her seat. Mary watched snow and ice build up on the windshield. That sounds familiar. The streetcar driver could not see. So that's another key word for cause and effect. That's a clue word. So he pushed open the windshield. So the driver pushes open the window. That is one thing that happens because there's snow and ice on the windshield. Something else happens. He is freezing. Okay. There could be more than one effect, right? Um, so he pushed open the windshield. This helped him to see better as a result. All right. There's another clue word for cause and effect. Snow and ice blew in his face. Soon his nose and ears were ice cubes. So he was cold. All right. The next one we're looking for, I'm going to cover it up so you don't see the answers. As a result, traffic moved slowly. So that's what happened. We need to figure out why did traffic move slowly? We need to find the cause of it. Other cars kept stopping too. Sometimes the drivers hopped out. They wiped off their windshields. Then, cause and effect, they got back in and drove. As a result, cause and effect, traffic moved slowly. So why did traffic move slowly? Traffic moved slowly because drivers have, and I did caveman notes. These are not complete sentences. Drivers have to stop and wipe windshields. So that is why traffic moves slowly. There's two ways you can say this. You could say traffic moves slowly because drivers had to stop and wipe windshields. Or you could say drivers had to stop and wipe, wipe windshields so traffic moves slowly. Right? When you say so, when you use so, cause comes first. When you use because, effect is first. Usually, you can go by that rule for a while. All right, next one. This is our cause, the cause. Driver moved a handle inside the car. All right, so what happened when the driver moved a handle inside the car? What happened? Form the skip. Mary had a model built. It was made of quality wood, rubber, and metal. Soon the model was ready to test. It was fitted on a windshield. 
The driver removed a handle inside the car. The handle caused a blade to move back and forth across the glass. So driver moved a handle inside the car. So the windshield wiper and blade moved. So the, and this is a tent, which means when you add stuff on top, you want to put what you wrote on top in between these two words. So the windshield wiper blade moved because the driver moved a handle inside the car. All right. Next up, we have, it took many years before people used windshield wipers. Why did it take many years? We know that's the effect. Well, what happened? It took many years for people to actually use them. Why? Let's find the cause. Let's find the why. By 1930, oh, I'm sorry. Mary's windshield wiper solved a problem, but it took many years before people used them. That's because most people did not own cars. So the reason why not many people use the windshield wipers for a while is not many people owned cars. All right, so we talked about cause and effect more. I brought up some other examples, but that was the main meat. That was the juice of it. And then um, we had walk to learn. And then when we came back, we discussed our bats. So it is in your week eight and nine, language arts packet, the T chart. So go, it's after the caveman notes. I'm gonna just, if you wanna pause it, we colored our topic sentence green, our details are yellow, our elaborations red. The reason is your um, topic sentence needs to be specific, but not too specific. You're just introducing your reader to what you're writing about. Then you need to kind of slow down because now you're separating, you're giving more specific details and then red, like a stop sign, you stop. You have to give, you have to elaborate. You need to talk about specifics. You need to give examples. And then your conclusion, you could speed up again. You're just concluding it. You're just writing a sentence that is similar to your topic sentence. All right. So our caveman, um, from our caveman notes, that is what we use. We just use the body section first for paragraph one. We split it up into three sections, head, wings, and then inside their bodies, what goes on inside their bodies. We want to do it in sequence. We want to first write about their heads because that's on top. Then their wings are next. And then inside their body is their full body. When you write a paragraph, it is going to always be green, your topic sentence. When I use colors, I mean this is the section you're pulling the information. So your first sentence is green. Then you go red, yellow, red, yellow. <gasps> I got the backwards. Scratch that out of your brain. <clears throat> the green topic sentence. And then you'll have a yellow sentence and then red. Yellow, red, yellow, red, and then your conclusion. And that would be a solid paragraph. All right. So we first talked about our head. We just went to our caveman notes, notes we've already taken. And we found the parts that talk specifically about their head. So we have that sharp teeth. They Some have leaf-shaped noses, I just remember from the story. And some look like dogs, like that's their face. They have good hearing, smelling, and they're good at seeing. So that's their ears, their nose, and their eyes. That's all part of their, bo or their head. So then we wrote that down. So you can go ahead, pause. Then we moved on to their wings. What notes did we take that are specific to their wings? Well, we have that they're the only flying mammal. Flying, they use their wings. Their membrane is their skin, so that's between their bones and their wings. They hang by their toe claws. That's what, Their toe claws are on their wings. So that's what we wrote down for red. And then inside their bodies. We just... What I did to come up with these is we just took notes. From those notes, you look and you say, hmm, how can I put my notes in categories? There's some that are going to be similar to each other. So that's where you get your main detail. These are your supporting details. Inside their bodies is what we had left. Because the only thing we had not wrote, written about is warm blood, 
and how when they hibernate, their body temperature and their heart rate drops. Both of those, I thought, ooh, how can I categorize that? Well, their blood's inside their body, their heart's inside their body, and their body temperature is determined inside, you know, inside their body. So that's what we did. We filled that out. And then our conclusion we're going to do tomorrow. So if you didn't finish this, please pause. And then the rest of your homework. You need to work on your science from your weeks 10 and 11. It's the field journal. Do not worry about cutting it out. Oh my gosh, I just pulled up math. Silly me. Weeks 10 and 11, third grade science and social studies. This week was the field journal about dogs wagging their tails and it talks about other animals. Do not worry about cutting it. Just answer questions, rotate the paper, and don't worry that it's not in order. Then if you keep flipping in the back, there is Christopher Columbus Finds America. So we have Christopher Columbus Finds America. So read, answer the questions, but do not do the to-do. Don't worry about the to-do. You have PE at 1 o'clock. You need to read for 30 minutes, and that is your homework. Bye, everybody.